Okay, and we are live. So good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us uh, and welcome to the latest episode of the We Are Careers show. Um, as always, my name is Chris Webb. I'm an employability advisor with Sheffield Hallam and a registered career development professional and member of the CDI. Um, and I'm joined as always, first of all, uh, by my co-host, Meet Sabir. Um, Sabir, very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon and welcome everybody to our new unusual time of 1pm. My name is Sabiha, I work in 12 countries as a RCDP and I specialise in working with young people who are looking to transform their career potential. Plus I'm the creator of the 4.0 Class Academy which is all about upskilling career guidance counsellors, helping them deliver powerful career support to students. And I want to encourage everybody who's watching um, live right now in the Facebook page um, to share with us who you are and what are you doing? What area of career, what kind of career practitioner are you? Put it in the comments below. Brilliant. Thanks, Sabir. So we've already got a shout out from Maidstone. So we, we're covering um, the breadth of the country today um, because, of course, our guest who's with us today is covering right the other end. So uh, we're very pleased to be joined today by Dr. Pete Robertson, um, Associate Professor of Career Guidance at Napier University and CDI Project Associate for Scotland um, for our episode on the home nations and particular Scottish focus today. So uh, Pete, thanks very much for joining us today. Hi folks. Hello everybody. Thanks very much for inviting me. Thanks for, for, thanks for having me and thanks for showcasing Scotland today. Much appreciated. No problem. We're going to be grilling you a little bit further on Scotland as we go through. And um, Sabir is going to be doing a little bit of grilling in a second uh, on a more kind of personal level. <laughs> we'll kind of get to that in a second. But um, just to give a brief kind of run through of what's going to be taking place on the show today. Um, as I said, we're going to be grilling Pete about some uh, particular CEIAG issues surrounding uh, what's happening in the Scottish space at the moment. And um, we're also going to be hearing um, a shout out for another uh, fantastic CDI member that Sabir is going to be covering in a couple of minutes. And as always, we're going to be rounding up everything with the latest CDI news and general careers news um, from across the different career spaces, um, FE, schools, HE, adult guidance, etc. So without further ado, we'll kind of move straight on to our introductions and get into the show. So Sabir, over to you. Um, let's get cracking. Thank you, Chris, for that wonderful introduction. And guys, if you have any questions for our guest today, Dr. Pete Robertson, please, 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 please drop them in the comments below. We promise you we'll get to them as quick as we can and as many as we can as well. And if we miss any, then what we'll do is we'll come back to you at a later date because we really want to hear from you. As we say, we really want to showcase the amazing, phenomenal work that's happening in Scotland. So Dr. Peter Robertson, or as we're going to refer to as Pete today, is an associate professor of careers guidance at Napier. So tell us a little bit about the work that you do there. And also we always ask each of our guests to share a fun fact about themselves and a feel good story that you'd like to share that you've um, with over the last couple of weeks. So um, Pete, let us hear a little bit about the work that you do. Great, okay. Um, so I, I wear various hats. The biggest hat is that I teach career guidance to budding careers advisors that Edinburgh Napier University. We've got a, for many years there, we've had a training, postgraduate training program. So that's my main job is teaching about policy and theory in relation to uh, career guidance and development. Um, I dabble a bit in research as well um, and writing about careers. And most of the stuff I write is to do with the links between careers and health, particularly mental health. And also, um, I'm very interested in support for disadvantaged groups and unemployed groups, um, help, you know, employment support programs that help people get into work is, a, is an area of interest to me. Um, I'm also, another hat is I'm also involved in NISEC, the National Institute for um, Career Education and Counselling, and particularly in, involved with the journal there and, and the publication of the journal and, and to some extent the editing of it. Um, so I'm kind of behind the scenes on one of your CDI member benefits because uh, twice a year the NISEC journal is made available to CDI members mm -hmm. and you get a link your, in your emails uh, to the website where you can get the issue. So um, I'm involved in, in supplying that to, to, to the CDI um, and so the, last, the latest issue, the October issue, out now. recently. And that was really? you know, showcasing 
new voices so new research so instead of the same old tired researchers that we don't want to hear from them we want to hear some new voices so so we got some some folk from across europe to to contribute to that journal so that so it's a fab issue big issue as well so lots to read there Fantastic. Um, Great for those of you that are students right now that are studying perhaps and you're doing research and theory or for any practitioner that's just, you know, likes to geek out on research and development. And I just want to add as well that we've got a special, special exclusive um, from Pete today as well that we're going to be dropping later on towards the end of the show. So make sure you stay tuned and you watch right till the end because we've got a really exciting um, exclusive from one of Dr. Robertson's latest books. Yeah, well, um, I don't, well, I don't want to give the game away too much, but um, the, I mean, the the book that you're referring to there is is something uh, something that I've been working on a lot with Tristram Hooley and Phil yep. McCash. So uh, the Oxford Handbook of Career Development, which is um, mostly published online, but it won't feel real until it's physically in my hand, which hopefully will be in January or thereabouts. Um, so that's been a, a big thing I've been involved with. Yeah. So, Excellent. And then tell us a little bit about, um, Pete, about the work that you do for the CDI, the new role that you've taken on. Yeah, OK. Um, so um, it is very new. I, I saw you, 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 you did Wales last week, so you set the bar pretty high there with a very dynamic Carolyn Parry on, on there. So I'm, I'm at a much earlier stage into this role. Um, it's relatively new to me. Um, and I've been getting lots of help from people like Julianne Jameson, who's been on the, the scene in, in the CDI in Scotland for many years. So the main thing we're looking to do there is to, what I'd like to do is to create a sense of community in Scottish career guidance, to, to build a, a kind of an, a sense that there's an inclusive community for practitioners and to do that across all sectors. Uh, of careers work um, and employment support work. So um, for me, that means reaching out beyond members. We definitely want to do some things distinctively for members, but I also want to reach out beyond members to to um, new new people uh, that we've not really reached before, and to create a kind of a dialogue. Um, so we're going to create an online presence uh, for the careers community in Scotland. Uh, make use of social media. We're going to generate some content that's on a fairly regular basis, but fairly short bites that people can dip into easily, podcasts and, and the like, um, involving practitioners, experts, academics, students, opportunity providers. So get a, a diverse range of voices, um, because I think folk in Scotland do want to hear from other Scots about what's going on in their own, yeah. own, own, own neck of the woods. Um, and hopefully by doing this, we'll boost CDI membership as well. That's an excellent going to be an ambition. Excellent, Pete. So it sounds like there's so much sort of exciting and new innovation that's in the pipeline right now. Um, so those of you that are interested in Scotland or you yourself are based in Scotland and doing work in Scotland, definitely Pete is the one that you should be reaching out to. And we'll be sharing how you can connect with Pete um, in the resources document as always. Now, we've got to hear about, obviously, Pete, the career practitioner, career development professional. Let us hear today now one fun fact that perhaps we don't know about you and your feel good story for today. Oh, sure. OK, um, well, I'm really into jazz. Um, jazz is a oh. big thing. And um, I play guitar in a jazz band. So I've got a, a big fat guitar that makes a big fat warm sound. And nice. um, I have a lot of fun with that. I was I was gutted when the lockdown came because we had a series of gigs lined up at, of all places, Edinburgh Central Library. Um, I didn't know you were allowed to make noise in the library, but apparently you can. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately, they cancelled them, them all just uh, just when lockdown hit. Um, but that's uh, that's an important part of my life is, is making noises. So it's fun, but probably more fun for me than for the audience, I would say. The fun's not shared out equally. Um, <laughs> We'll have to wait and see what your audiences have to say. And is there a feel good story, something that perhaps you've either been a part of or that you've witnessed yourself or you've heard about that you want our members to hear, know about? Um, well, I've got 
I've got two, if that's not too cheeky. One's a bit yep. more kind of global and one's a bit more local. Um, first, first is about Scottish education, that traditionally um, Scots pride themselves on having a very good education system and a distinctively different education system. Now, a few years ago, that took a bit of a hit when um, some of the international comparisons, the PISA uh, test comparisons between nations, gave Scotland a kind of a mediocre performance. So, so that was very disappointing to a lot of people in the sector. But last week, there was something to cheer us up because there's a new piece of test uh, of global competence. So how people cope in a globalized world. And Scotland was right up there at the top, uh, in the top oh. three nations yeah. for understanding the perspectives of other people and for having wow. positive attitudes towards immigrants. And I think wow. that last one particularly important because it's something that, that we pride ourselves on in, in Scotland. Um, so that was that was a nice bit of news. You have to look hard yeah. to find good news at the moment. So that was that yeah. was a nice one. Um, a little I'll more, watch the second one, Pete. yeah, a little more local to uh, us is that um, Ecodoc is coming to Scotland. So oh. Ecodoc is the European doctoral program for career counselling. So that's a bunch of people doing PhDs across Europe um, like to get together and to learn together. And they're coming to Edinburgh for a summer school in June of next year. Okay. Um, so that's fab. It'll be like a, a nerd fest, really. It'll be all... <laughs> People we love a good nerd fest, Pete. Um, we love a good nerd fest. <laughs> so good news for people like me, uh, at least. Um, <laughs> because that's, I mean, particularly nice because Scotland has, through SDS and the ESRC, has sponsored a number of PhD students. So that's something that's really nice that happens in Scotland is we do, we do get a bunch of people sponsored to do study careers related PhDs, which is fab because that's generating the next generation of, of academics in the field. So that's a, that's a nice bit of good news. Thank you, Pete. Those are two really different yet really good feel good stories. And I'm sure um, the insights that you've shared and up and coming events that are coming up as well on members will really benefit from. I can see that the comment section is kind of blowing up right now. So I am going to come to you all. Um, but before I do, I just want to jump in following on from the theme that um, Pete has shared with us about feel good stories. You know, we like to also showcase um, a feel good story each show and we invite members to either nominate themselves or another member for outstanding and inspirational and creative out of the box approach to their work. So and each show I ask everybody to join in and clap for this week's winner. And I've got to say, you are making it more and more difficult for us to pick each week because the nominations are coming in so strong and so fast. So number one, please continue to nominate. We're loving the, the names and the number of nominations that are coming in, but also as well, um, you know, we're excited that we get to celebrate um, some amazing work as well. Now, if you're watching live right now, please drop a clapping emoji. And if you're watching in the replay, as I know many of you do, post a clapping emoji in the comments to show your support and let's together recognize an amazing and resourceful practitioner this week and the winner is Catherine Jennick creator of what's your strength and her work in send so congratulations Catherine well done now if you're thinking that name sounds familiar it will be because she actually has an article featured in the latest edition of careers matters for her interactive what your strength cards are and in addition to that i know that she's in the middle of creating a version for the send community as well so well done Catherine, for all the innovation and all the pivoting that you are doing during these challenging times congratulations well done and that then brings me on to introducing today's topic, which is about what does the careers landscape look like in Scotland? Um, I know Chris is going to go into more details regarding that. So I will just pick up on some of the comments. And I know that, thank you, Rebecca C. We've had, oh, speaking of Pete, we have the Wells um, representative for the CDI, Carolyn, just jumping in on the chat. 
She's saying that she, um, thanks for your kind words, Pete. Have a great and very experienced helping hand with Julie Ann and always happy to help if I can. So there you go, already some cross connections happening. And then we've had another Facebook user who's talked about, I found Pete's work on mental health so useful when writing my dissertation and the usefulness of co-constructing a career learning program with and for adults living with mental health challenges. And I'm so proud to say that despite this year's challenges, the pilot program is now live in a virtual form following our first iteration as a face-to-face -face program. Thank you, Pete. So already some fans here, Pete, for you. Um, and then we've got our, where else have we got? They've got some, it's such a great thing to nominate colleagues, Rebecca, amazing practitioner, well done, Catherine. Hello, everyone from Glasgow, looking forward to the chat. So we've, as Chris says, we've got a whole host of people here in, engaging with us. So Chris, what's our first question for Pete today? Fab, thanks, Amir. And I hard to believe we've got another musician uh, on our list of guests. Yeah. So I think between who we've had on the Real Career Show already, we've got more than enough for a CDI house band. So we're, we're well away yeah. with that. So um, I think it's just to, to kind of, kick on with what Sophia has been talking about and I guess what you mentioned um, you know in your kind of introduction as well you've talked about how Scotland obviously has a you know a slightly different approach to education um, and probably very different when we talk about the English system um, in terms of kind of what some of the key focal areas are and I know obviously in September 2019 last you know week or two weeks ago we were talking about um, the new Welsh curriculum and this time you know it would be useful to hear a little bit about the kind of curriculum for excellence in Scotland. But I suppose really kind of just drawing on the theme that you've mentioned, how perhaps the education system in Scotland helps careers practitioners um, or whether it does indeed help them. And maybe whether the differences in the Scottish education system have an impact in terms of how Scottish careers practitioners kind of conduct the work that they do. So I'd be interested to hear just a little bit more about that um, if you're happy to expand. Sure. So, well, um, Creek. Curriculum for Excellence was refreshed last year, but it's it's been around for quite a long time now. Um, so so it's not it's not new to us, and it and, and it's it's maybe different from the curriculum in England in that it's not laid down in legislation, but it does have a sort of an a integrating philosophy to it. It's a learner centred kind of curriculum. Um, so we have a body called Education Scotland, which uh, supports the curriculum design and does inspections of schools and the like. So they, they set benchmark statements for different subject areas. Um, so, I mean, when it was introduced a few years, there were a few teething problems when it was introduced, but it's mostly settled down now. But but career education itself wasn't really given a big boost by, by Curriculum for Excellence when it was introduced. So I'm not sure, it, you know, initially um, career education did well out of that. Um, but in 2014, we, um, Ian Wood did a report, a big oil mogul, Ian Wood did a report um, called Developing Scotland's Young Workforce, uh, or DYW as it tends to be called now, um, did a report for the Scottish Government and that led to an educational initiative and lots of funding to go with it. And so they created a career education benchmark statement and also benchmarks for work experience, plus some guidelines for sport, uh, school, schools and employers to work together in partnership. So there's been some effort since then to, to, to really improve career education in school and Education Scotland are, through their inspections trying to encourage schools to, to, to go along with this. So, so I think there was a bit of a dip, but it has been on an upward curve um, since um, since then um, and um, we've got obviously in, in a substantial state sector career service that provides a lot of support to schools as well and is well positioned to, to resource the school sector and provide online information. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for that, Pete. And sort of kind of following on from that, but I'm just going to again head to the comment section. So I know we've got somebody here that's saying hello from up to up to Nippon 7, providing international guidance in career leader training and QISCS assessing. Awesome. Great to hear from you. Great to see you today. We've got I'm a new careers advisor working in HE in Edinburgh. Welcome. That's Rebecca CJ. Um, who else have we got here? We've got definitely Wales are definitely in the crowd today. Oh, and then we had somebody touching upon 
um, your jazz musical abilities, Pete. Uh, we have an Upton Jazz in our library. We're not in lockdown, of course. Um, so definitely people resonating with you um, on that as well. So following on, um, Pete, from what you were really saying and what you've been sharing with us about sort of, you know, what's happening uh, and, you know, expanding upon obviously the, the experiences and the delivery that is happening in Scotland. We often hear that career, you know, education, information, advice and guidance delivery can be quite different across the home nations due to in part the context of regional labour markets, careers policy, which is something that you've touched upon and the way education is delivered, which is essentially what you're describing to us. And not to mention the body that delivers this skills development Scotland is very different in structure to the England's, um, England's National Career Service. So my, our question is to you is, what do you feel are some of the key differences between the careers landscape in Scotland compared to the other home nations? And what are you particularly proud of when it comes to the Scottish careers community? So two questions there, I slipped in the extra one in there. Did you see that, Pete? Yeah, bonus one there. Okay, um, well, almost all of the policy is different in Scotland from the rest of the UK. Um, the, the only exceptions is things around equality law are UK wide and some of the things that Department for Work and Pensions does are UK wide, but pretty much everything else is devolved to Scotland. So the policy is distinctive. And just before COVID hit, um, a, a new Scottish government policy was produced, a career strategy for, for Scotland, which emphasizes cross-sectoral working. And, and that's something I think in the CDI we can maybe try and support by bringing in, you know, bringing together FEHE and, and state sector careers advisors with independence as well. That's something we can maybe support. Um, so Skills Development Scotland is probably, well, it is the biggest career service in Europe, but it, it's wow. also the government agency that delivers on vocational training and apprenticeships as well. Okay. So those two things are combined into one kind of government agency. Um, and it's got a very substantial online service uh, through something called My World of Work, which is a web portal for you know, young people, adults and, and other target groups. Um, so it's a pretty substantial operation and, and um, you know, with COVID, obviously, like all organisations, it's been wrestling with having people working from home and then beginning to bring them back into schools with the schools going back. Um, and what's been happening lately in Scotland is, is there's been a substantial investment in something called Youth Guarantee. So we know there's this big threat of youth unemployment post COVID or peri-COVID, during COVID, if you like. Um, yeah. So £50 million has gone into this youth guarantee to support youth employment and skills development in Scotland is a key agency in delivering on that. Um, and alongside that, it's got a service. Well, there's a, there are local partnerships in Scotland which support people being made redundant. And it's called PACE, Partnership Action for Continuing Employment. So that's also had a boost. So SDS is very involved in these local partnerships to support um, workers who are at risk of redundancy or being made redundant um, as a result of COVID. So that's a key. Those are two of the key responses at the moment um, and some funds to help people re retrain as well. Um, so, so it's a big, there's a lot going on in Scotland. I've yeah. talked, probably talked for ages too long about this. But you ask what what I'm proud of or what's good. Yeah. I think there's yeah. a number of things. Um, uh, we've got a very well resourced state service, probably the best resourced of, of the four nations in, in the UK. Um, the Scottish government makes a real effort to do joined up policy making. Um, so there's a strategic board, the Enterprise and Skills Strategic Board brings together all the main agencies. So when they come up with a policy initiative, they, they delegate to every agency, schools, colleges, universities as well, to try and work together on an initiative. So there's a real effort for joined up policy making. So that's good. Um, another good thing is we've got two fab training centres for careers advisors in Scotland, at both my own university and also shout out to the University of West of Scotland um and there's a commitment in scotland to a postgraduate level training 
professional training for careers advisors. So, so there's a kind of a line in the sand, John, that, that, that we think it's important is the postgraduate level profession. So that's a good thing that helps to maintain what we're doing. Um, and I think I mentioned earlier that there, there are PhD students as well in, in, in Scotland, sponsored PhD students, which helps to create a research environment for us as well. So loads of fab things going on. Um, the danger is that, I mean, we do get people coming to Scotland to see how career guidance is done. Pre-COVID, you couldn't move for parties of Swedish careers advisors and, and <laughs> wanting to find out how we do things. Um, but uh, so, I mean, there is a danger of getting complacent, I think, if, you, if, you, if you're in a position of strength. So it's important that the profession in Scotland and the institutions in Scotland are challenging themselves and challenging each other to, to, to keep that going. That's really, it's really interesting, Pete, and I think some kind of key themes coming back there that we, we can kind of see in the chat thread around both sort of the collaboration, as you said, that sort of cross-sectoral kind of work together, the support, the, you know, the making sure that people are connected. But also, I think, as you said, the recognition. And I, I remember reading when the career strategy came out in Scotland, the new, newest career strategy, um, Jamie Hepburn, the MSP, uh, the statement that he put supporting it, and it was just, I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a politician in England <laughs> showing that level of support? To the the career sector and to careers professionals and it just made it i think a lot of english careers professionals very envious because it was clearly kind of demonstrating the recognition of the expertise of the sector but saying you know i, I appreciate i'm not an expert in this sector but I, I give my backing you know to this strategy and what it can do to support young people adults anybody throughout their you know the, the process of their career development so i think that sort of stuff is, is great to hear and as you said the, obviously the risk is always trying not to be complacent but i think you know, it's great that that sort of work is going on and, and can be held up, um, both to kind of practitioners in Scotland and, of course, around the home nations and, and Europe, as you mentioned as well, uh, favoured with the Swedes, apparently. So there we go. Um, before we finish, Pete, I mean, we're going to move on to the news in a, in a second, but you, you've encapsulated so much stuff there within that, that short sort of 25 minutes we've had. Um, any final thoughts for anyone who might be listening, Scottish practitioner or otherwise, just in relation to kind of moving forward your role, any kind of key things that you'd want people to take away from um, the session today? Sure, I'd really like to hear from Scottish members about how, how they feel, what they'd like to see developed uh, um, in their CDI members, member benefits. Um, we've, we've tweaked the CDI news email to Scotland to make it a bit more Scotto-centric as opposed to Anglo-centric. Um, and we're gonna be creating some webinars, some CPD, webinars so i'm going to be doing a little survey by email of, of members just to get a sense of the best times of day to deliver that and the kind of topics you're interested in we'll probably start with something mental health related partly because i can contribute to that but also because there's a, a clear need with with covid to to uh, um, the pressures of that to, to to address that so um i really want to hear from um, members about what kind of CPD they would like and, and what else they want to uh, want to see happening and then we can build from there. That's brilliant Pete, thank you very much for that and again to anyone who's watching in the resources document that we will upload on the Facebook group and um, follow in this broadcast we've got all the details in there about how to get in touch with Pete um, you know via the, uh, the Napier website, uh, via Twitter, via LinkedIn as well so do take a look at those. Um, but Pete thanks very much for your time we're going to move on to the, the, the news section now um, so Sabir I'm going to pass straight over to you for our latest CDI news um, to round off the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And today I have got a ton of CDI news. So I'm going to be like going at speed of Gonzalez. So if you need to replay this back at a so slower speed, by all means do so. So I want to pick up from, remember at the beginning of the show, we mentioned that um, Pete is giving away an exclusive to his latest book. Well, there is free access to one of the chapters um, in the resources document that we're going to be as Chris mentioned we're going to be uploading shortly after the show so look at look out for that so you'll be able to read for free and who doesn't love free stuff so thank you for P and obviously your publishers and the CDI for putting this uh, offer together for us so that we as members can have access to the book now 
Wrapping up Black History Month, Shamim Khan, who is in charge of curating the content on the CDI website, wants to invite members to contribute articles, news, research papers, success stories, including ideas about how the CDI can become even more inclusive for the BAME communities. Um, anyone that has any suggestions or ideas, please head on over to the CDI diversity resources section. Again, the link will be provided and all of this information will be provided in the resources document that will be uploaded shortly after the show, um, including Shamim's contact details. Lobbying activities. Working with the Careers Development Policy Group, recent focus has been on careers guidance for adults and lobbying the government to give the National Career Service greater flexibility to see a wider range of clients. The CDI will be sending an open letter signed by over 350 organizations and individuals to Ministers for Skills and Apprenticeships, Gillian Keegan, MP, on Monday. So I think that's already gone. The final letter and signatories will also be on the website. So look out for that. Now, national conferences, dates for your diaries. The National Careers Leaders Conference will take place on May, Monday the 23rd and Tuesday the 24th of November. Um, calling for workshops, ideas will close on the 3rd of November. So if you have an idea for something, please, please, please reach out to the CDI team. National Careers Fest, a new virtual two-day conference designed to enhance your skills and knowledge as we imagine new ways of working using digital technology. That will be taking place on Wednesday and Thursday, the 13th and 14th of January. Then we have the National Research Conference, which is taking place on Thursday, the 25th of February, and it will be on Zoom. We have the CDI is working on a new research strategy. The CDI has already agreed the dates for the next online research conference. It's the Demystifying Research, Encouraging Curiosity 2020. The date is Thursday, the 25th of February, and we are also working on establishing the cdi is also working on establishing a new evidence-based repository which will become the go-to place for all research on our evidence base um, i.e it's about evidence the power impact and value of career guidance as well as establishing a new online research forum for practitioners so for community of interest for career careers education has announced three new members alison bennett john ambrose and kate owen in wales also, Maria Jacobson will represent the CEC in the group. So congratulations to everybody. We would like as many members as possible to comment on the new careers framework. Um, there is a survey monkey link that is included in the resources documents So check that out. If you have something to say about that, please, please, please contribute by um, using the survey monkey link. Entries for the UK Career Development Awards are now open and the week long award ceremony will take place from Monday the 8th till Friday the 12th of March. Applications are easy to do and all the links will be available in the resources documents. National Careers Leaders Conference workshops will be announced next week. So I know like many of you careers leaders, if you're excited to know, watch your inbox and watch this space. We have the CDI president elections coming up soon. So please, when the ballot paper is released, use your votes. Um, we would love to see it. And this will be emailed out to everybody. So look out for that shortly in your inbox. And that's it, Chris. That's me done for the CDI news for this show. Over to you for the main news feed. Fantastic. Thanks, Sabir. And, and yeah, just um, in, a quick one because we've had that sort of shout out to Catherine today. Um, again, as Sabir mentioned at the top of the show, reminder that the Career Matters uh, physical hard copy should be with you by now, or at least it's been sent out in the post. And if not, the PDF is now on the members area. So do have a look at that. Do check out um, Catherine's article that uh, Sabir mentioned at the top of the show. Do have a look at that. Um, and of course, you know, if you've um, seen some kind of innovative practices that Sabir mentioned, keep those nominations coming in, but also not just to us, but also to the UK Career Development Awards, where of course the nominations are open and they're open until the start of January. So do put those in. All of the information is on the um, CDI website and we'll be sharing that in the resource doc as well. So just on the main news feed for me, almost again, too much to kind of talk about. So we'll be putting most of this stuff in the resource feed. We've got all the usual labour market updates from uh, the IS. Uh, and from Prospects Luminate. Uh, we've also got a really good article from DMH Associates from uh, Deirdre Hughes regarding the Lifetime Skills Guarantee, kind of unpicking that, looking at that in a little bit more detail. Uh, from the HE careers perspective, we've got the latest 
Cast Phoenix issue. So lots of really interesting uh, examples there of how higher education career services have been kind of pivoting during COVID-19. Some really interesting stuff there. Uh, Mark Yates has very kind put together uh, a really nice kind of collection of vlogs, blogs, and sort of general kind of podcasts related to the career sector. So there's a really wide range within there, well worth having a look at. We put a link to his article again um, on the research, um, oh, sorry, on the resources document that we'll share. Um, and then just a final kind of note really on the uh, Careers Guidance for Social Justice blog that we like to uh, give a little bit of a shout out to each week. And um, the blog of the week that we've highlighted this week is from uh, Raza Abbas, who's a, an international based careers practitioner, I believe based in Pakistan. Um, and his is all about kind of uh, igniting humanity with hope-based careers guidance uh, in what they call the VUCA times. So the volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous times, which I think pretty well sums up where we're at at the moment. So um, some really, really uh, interesting kind of articles in there as well, which we'll be sharing as part of the resource document. Please do take a look at those. Um, but that brings us really nicely to the end of the show. So um, all that remains to be said is uh, thanks very much to Pete for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Wonderful. Thanks to Sabir as always. Uh, thank you to those who've watched the show with us. Um, and if you are watching now, uh, have a great day and we'll see you in two weeks time.